Thank you. So we can now move to member statement. And I recognize the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you, Speaker. Millions of Ontarians rely on local libraries in their daily lives. Libraries are far more than books and computers. They are also a critical lifeline for Ontario's most vulnerable people. Libraries confront many difficult challenges facing Ontarians. Mental health, homelessness, equity for Indigenous and racialized communities, newcomer integration, child and youth poverty. I want to highlight three priorities that the Toronto Public Library, Ontario Library Association and the Federation of Ontario Public Libraries are calling the government to act on. One, implementation of a sustainable funding model for public libraries on First Nations reserves to ensure that these important local hubs are fully funded and viable. Two, increase investments in mental health and addiction crisis intervention services available to the community. Public libraries recognize that they are places of refuge for the homeless, and staff need training so they can provide support in an empathetic and equitable way. The and three, the creation of an Ontario digital public library. By leveraging the province's significant purchasing powers, libraries will be able to provide all Ontarians access to common core set of high-quality e-learning and online resources. Speaker, I know firsthand the value of public libraries. When I came to Canada, my local public library, Parkdale Library, was my go-to place. I borrowed books, but I also worked on my university applications and accessed many resources that helped a new immigrant like me get settled. This helped me get to where I am today. Investing in public libraries means giving everyone a chance to succeed. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Oxford. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, every year my family and I join the people of Oxford in celebrating the festive season. We can't help but feel the excitement and the cheer. Recently, I got to see that glee as I joined my constituents in the Santa Claus Parade in Ingersoll, Tilsonburg, and in Woodstock. I saw thousands of smiling families getting into the Christmas spirit. This is also a time to spend with family and friends. Even though it's cold outside, the joy of eating good food and sitting around the fireplace with people we love warms our hearts and homes. Perhaps most importantly, the Christmas season is also a time to help those who are less fortunate. In Ox and Oxford has always been a community that helps those in need, and it, it's during Christmas where it really shows. Not everyone has a family to celebrate with um, or a place to call home. So the people of Oxford are stepping up to provide shelters and emergency housing. There are local food banks and hot, free hot meals for those who cannot afford to put a Christmas meal on their table. And there are toy drives for parents who can't afford to purchase gifts for their children. Madam Speaker, I wish a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone in Oxford and all of Ontario. Thank you. Next member statement, the member of Ottawa, West Nepean. Today marks the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. On December 6, 1989, 14 young women were killed at the École Polytechnique in Montreal. The shooter entered a mechanical engineering classroom, separated the men from the women, and opened fire on the women. These 14 promising young students were murdered in an act of violent misogyny. Today, as we pause and remember 33 years later, violence against women and girls remains the most widespread and pervasive human rights violation in Canada and worldwide, affecting an estimated one in three women. In Ottawa this year, six women and one 15-year-old girl have been murdered. All of these murders involved allegations of intimate partner violence, stalking, or obsession. This is consistent with the Statistics Canada report that revealed seven out of ten female homicide victims last year were killed by spouses, partners, or family members. The report from the Renfrew County inquest into femicides that took place in 2015 included a recommendation to declare intimate partner violence an epidemic. Sadly, the government has yet to follow through on this and the other recommendations in the report. We have a problem. We need to act now. We cannot lose any more of our mothers and sisters and daughters and friends. 
The Ottawa Coalition to End Violence Against Women and similar organizations across this province are all working towards the same goals, eliminating gender-based violence, but they can't do this work alone. We all need to work together to end violence against women so that no more women in this country need to die simply for being women. Thank you. The next member's statement. Who is it? Oh. The member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Today, it gives me the distinct pleasure to rise in the House and to welcome to Queen's Park two-time Paralympian and Canadian record holder Marissa Papa Constantino, along with her parents, Bill and Kathy, and boyfriend Justin. Marissa was born and raised in the riding of Scarborough Centre and trained at Scarborough Phoenix Track Club. She was born with a right foot, without a right foot, but uh, at the age of 12, she fell in love with track after being fitted for her first running prosthetic blade at the Holland Bloorview Kid Rehabilitation Hospital, to whom she is currently a proud ambassador for. Marissa represented her country numerous, at numerous international competitions, including the 2016 Paralympics game in Rio de Janeiro at a tender age of 16. Despite tough losses and injuries earlier in her career, her resilient focus and hard work helped her qualify for the 2020 Paralympics game in Tokyo, she, where she won a bronze medal in the women's t uh, T60 100 meter race with a personal best in Canadian record of 13.07 seconds. In addition, she also set a Canadian record with a 27.08 second run in the 200 meter event. Marissa, I am very proud of what you have accomplished thus far. I'm eager and hopeful that to look into the future of all the great things you still have to come. Thank you very much for being here, and I look forward to meeting you at the end of the day. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Kiwetanong. Speaker, I rise today on a day of remembrance and action on violence against women to bring attention to the serial murders of four First Nations women in Winnipeg. Last week, the Winnipeg Police Service announced charges against an alleged serial killer for the murders of Morgan Harris, Mercedes Myron, and another loved one. We don't know her name, but has been given the name Buffalo Woman. And earlier, Re Rebecca Contois. I stand in solidarity with the families in Manitoba who are grieving the loss of their loved ones and with those who continue the search for their relatives and the many missing women and girls across Ontario, across Canada. Indigenous women, girls, two-spirited people have the fundamental right to life and the right to be safe. Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited people are not safe in their everyday lives. We know that the persistent and the deliberate human rights violations and abuses are the root cause behind these staggering rates of violence against Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirited people. And we must address the hate, the genocide, that continues to put the safety of Indigenous women at risk. Morgan, Mercedes, Rebecca, Buffalo woman, remember their names.
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Flamborough Glanbrook. Thank you and good morning, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take this time to talk about the generosity and compassion of the chicken farmers of Ontario in their efforts to feed people who are less fortunate. Last week, I had a conversation with Murray Opstein. He is the chair of the Chicken Farmers of Ontario, and we talked about the CFO CARES program and its ongoing partnerships to tackle hunger in our communities. Murray also happens to be a chicken farmer in my riding of Flamborough-Glanbrook. CFO CARES supports various not-for-profit initiatives and organizations that provide food relief to people who need it. It includes organizations such as Feed Ontario and the United Way. The CFO assists farmers who want to donate fresh chicken to food banks within their communities. To date, nearly 600 chicken farmers have participated with donations of 300 chickens each. Anyone familiar with food banks, either by volunteering or donating, knows protein, especially meat protein, is one of the most sought-after items. CFO's annual donation target is to provide over a million fresh chicken meals. These donations from our chicken farmers epitomize what it means to be good citizens. These farmers are making a huge contribution to feeding people who are facing financial challenges. And for that, I want to say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. Next, we have the member for Don Valley East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to acknowledge the challenges and hardships my constituents in Don Valley East have endured over the past year. Healthcare has become more difficult than ever before, with fewer family doctors, longer wait times, and cancelled surgeries. The growing spectre of privatization, which has made it more difficult to seek medical attention via virtual care, is the first of many examples about how this government hasn't delivered for my constituents or for patients. Virtual care must be equitable and accessible, but as designed, it reveals the government's profiteering agenda. Make no mistake about it. Privatization is like a drop of poison in a well, and it contaminates the entire water supply. Another problem. Our environment and Greenbelt is under attack by Bill 23. We all need housing, but it needs to be safe and sustainable. It mustn't raise taxes for the benefits of developers. Bill 23 will lead to the same kind of development uh, uh, and uncontrolled runaway development that is being proposed in my riding along Winford Drive. 13 high-rise condos in that tiny space and no community input. My constituents must be consul consulted and amendments made, and runaway legislation like Bill 23 must be fixed. But there are things to look forward to. On December 13th, Ismailis around the world will celebrate the birthday of their spiritual leader and one of the world's foremost champions for pluralism and community service, His Highness the Aga Khan. To the Ismaili community and His Highness, I wish to say happy birthday and Salgara Kashali Mubarak. To the constituents of Don Valley East and the people of Ontario, I wish to share my very best wishes from my family to yours for happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, and a joyous New Year. To the members of Ontario's Jewish community, I wish you a happy and healthy Hanukkah, and I join you in celebrating the miracle of Jewish resilience in the face of oppression. Eat some latkes for me. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Thornhill. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, two weeks ago, uh, I had the pleasure of attending the 25th anniversary of the twinning of the city of Vaughan with the sister city of Baguio, Philippines, hosted by the Philippine Canadian Association of Vaughan, also known as FCAF, in my riding of Thornhill. This event was an important milestone for the Filipino community and FCAV, who have been promoting the objectives of the friendship agreement between Vaughan and Baguio City, strengthening the cultural, social, educational and economical opportunities between the two cities since 1997. Baguio City, known as the summer capital of the Philippines, is a major hub for education, with there being eight universities and colleges. To honour the twinning celebration, the Philippine delegation arrived in Vaughan, led by Vice Mayor Faustino Olawan, Councillor Fred Babigan, and officially accompanied by Arantas Castro, 
Council General of the Republic of Philippines in Toronto. The representatives for FCAV in Baguio City attended at Niagara University, also located in Ra Ra Riding, to sign a letter of intent to increase higher education cooperation in commemoration of the 25th anniversary. Erlinda Insing, who is the president of FCAV, has been a resident of Thornhill for over 35 years and someone who has been instrumental in keeping this relationship strong between the two cities. I am proud to have such a diverse riding with individuals such as Erlinda, along with Honourable Arantos Castro, constantly looking to help others thrive, and we look forward to honouring Erlinda next year when she celebrates 30 years president with FCAV. Mr. Speaker, uh, on one of the last days of the legislature before the break, I wish to extend everyone a very warm-hearted holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, uh, or Malagayan Pasco. Yeah. <laughs> member statements. The member for Halliburton Corth Lakes Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Twas weeks before New Year's and all through the home was last-minute planning, booking fun on smartphones. But this family you see planned closer to home, a staycation they called it, the whole province to roam. What's this? said the mother as she googled hotels. A tax credit for our stay? It also covers motels. That's 20 per cent off your bed to lay. Just make sure your trip is before New Year's Day. So don't spend those bucks on a pricey air flight. Come up to the Highlands, spend the day and the night. Some fun at Sir Sam's, the local ski club, then relax with a toddy in a legal hot tub. There's bakeries and breweries with real country charm, or try something different like an alpaca farm. The places, the flavors, Bring all of your friends. There's so much to savor, the fun never ends. Ice skating, ice fishing, ice cream, or ice wine. So many choices for such a great time. On Minden, on Millbrook, on Halliburton too, on Kinmount, on Woodville, all Ontario too. <laughs> now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Enjoy the tax credit we sent your way, a little something extra for your holiday. Thank you. 